Anthropic recently released the Ralph Wiggum plugin. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why we should use it, how to set this up on your local machine, and how we can be able to introduce different team roles, different personas, autonomously calling different roles to improving your applications iteration by iterations until you have a production ready applications. So pretty much that's what we're gonna cover in this video. And if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so before we jump in, a quick intro for those who are new here. My name is Eric, and I have spent years as a senior software engineer at companies like Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft. And I have started this YouTube channel to share everything I have learned along the way, from AI encoding to automations, Web3, career developments, and more, all broken down into practical tutorials that you can actually follow. So if you're ready to level up, make sure to check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get back to the video. Now, what is the problem that this plugin really trying to solve? Well, and traditionally, when we try to use Claude, we provide the prompts, and when Claude thinks that it finished the job, then it will stop, right? But the thing is that there are so many things that we're gonna improve after it's done. Maybe the user experience, or running a bunch of testings, or maybe you try to review the system overall, and it takes a lot of iterations over iterations to achieve the best solutions. And that's why Ralph Wiggum here is gonna solve this problem. And the way how it works behind the scene is that once we provide the prompts, Claude code here is, is gonna perform your instructions, and then once it finished, it will basically trigger a claw code hook that whenever it stops, then it will basically pass the prompt back to Claude and try to iterating through until it finish all the loops. And all we have to do here, just provide how many iterations that claw code have to perform and also a condition on when it should break, which I'll show you later on how you can be able to craft a perfect prompt like this. So pretty much that's how it works behind the scene and why we should use it. Now you understand everything, let's take a look at how to set it up on your local machine, how we can use it autonomously to continuously improve your applications overall and make your application productive ready. But before we do so, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, TestBrite. TestBrite is an AI agent built specifically for software testing. And with the release of the TestBrite MCP, you can now use it directly inside your coding IDE. So cursor, windsurf, cloud code, and more. Setup is super simple. You just add the configuration in your MCP settings and you're good to go. What I really like about TestBrite is that it doesn't blindly run tests. It first reads through your entire code base, understands the documentation, and validates the results your AI agents produce. It automatically generates a test plan from your PRD, creates test cases, ensures proper test coverage, and all of that without any manual input. From there, it executes the tests and sends detailed reports back to you, clearly showing what's broken and what needs attention. Most coding agents today average around 42% accuracy. But with TestBrite MCP, teams have been able to boost feature delivery accuracy up to 93%. So if you're interested in checking it out, you can watch the video I made on it or click the link in the description below for more details. Back to the video. All right, so to get started, first thing first, we're gonna CD into a project. And once we're in a project, we're just gonna run the claw code. And here you can see we have our claw code session open. And what we're gonna do first is try to install our marketplace inside of a claw code. So if I were to run this, you can see it's gonna add a marketplace into our plugins. And once we have this installed, what we're gonna do now is to run the next command, which is to install the Ralph plugin into our claw code plugins. So now if I were to run this, you can see is because we already have this installed. So all we had to do here is that I'm just gonna use the slash plugins to basically see if our Ralph Wiggum here is installed. So if I were to run the slash plugin, and if I were to do the installed, you can see that we have our Ralph Wiggum here successfully installed inside of our Clockwork plugins. All right, so now once we have this confirmed, then next step is to take a look at how to use it inside of our Clockwork session. All right, so now to use it, it's very simple. Here you can see that if I were to type in the slash Ralph Wiggum, here you can see that we have three options we can choose. So one is we can cancel the current Ralph Wiggum loop. Basically, if it's currently running, we can be able to use the slash command here to cancel it. And the other one is basically type in help to basically try to see if there's any way that we can be able to add additional options to it, things like that. And last one here, you can see, this is where we're gonna have the Ralph Wiggum here to start the loop. So if I were to do tap here, and here you can see that we have three options that we can pass into this slash command. One is the current prompt, exactly what we want the clock code here to do. And then it also mentions how many max iterations it should be able to perform. And then after the loop is completed, what kind of things we want to display inside of our clock code session. So after this is completed, we can be able to put replace like done, we can be able to put a check mark on it, things like that, right? So pretty much that's how we can be able to use Ralph Wiggum inside of a clock code session. So in this case, let's try to put it into practice and see how we can use it to basically complete the projects based on this. All right, so to show you a demonstration, here you can see I'm currently in my clock code session. 
And if I were to scroll all the way down, you can see that I have claw code here, generate a task list. Now, just a little bit of background about this project. Currently, I have the phase one of this project completed, and currently we're trying to move on to phase two. So there are some uh, on-stage changes that we have inside of a current branch. So we want to first have claw code here to commit them. And the most important part here is that we're going to have claw code here create a spec driven development planning, basically try to do the spec plan and spec tasks, basically generate a list of tasks before we do the execution. So right here, you can see it's going to show you how exactly going to commit those changes, right? Breaking the local unstaged changes into multiple commits. So then after that, here you can see that we have our phase two for the spec kit planning workflow. So we're going to have Clocko here to generate the entire plan. So for these features right here, you can see we have our spec, but we don't have our plan or tasks. And for these additional features, we don't have a spec for these features at all. So we're going to have Clocko here to generate the spec, the plans, the, the entire task list for all the features we're going to complete for phase two. And if we were to take a look at the expected output, here you can see that these are all the features that we have. So for all those features, you can see for each features, we have roughly around 120 or 150 to 200 tasks uh, generated. In total, you can see that we have roughly around 900 to 1,100 tasks that we're gonna have clock code here to do. And we're gonna put them into a master task list, which will aggregate them into one single file. So in this case, I'm just gonna execute this and let clock code here to generate the task list first before we move on to the next stage. So now you can see we have Clocko here generate the spec, the plan, and also the task list for the entire features for phase two. And here you can see all we had to do here, just run this command here. And basically I can just pass this to Ralph Wiggum here to basically run this autonomously. So in this case, let's take a look at how to do that. And just for your reference, I also asked Claude because I was thinking if I can be able to run this entire 1,400 task autonomously using Ralph Wiggum. But here you can see Claude recommends that we want to do this feature by feature because it creates a separate branch, right? So in this case, what we're going to do here is we're just going to check out that branch using Ralph Wiggum here to basically do the implements and then continuously do the testing review, repeat the phase two and phase three until we have a perfect solution. And then we're gonna merge that into the main branch and then repeat that process to the next feature. Instead of using this rough welcome here for the entire 1,500 task list. So in this case, that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna first check out to this one first and run with Ralph Wiggum here to basically in that single branch. All right, so then what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna first check out to this branch right here for the first feature that we're gonna implement. So right here, you can see, we're just gonna use the Ralph Wiggum command. And here you can see, we're gonna pass the prompt right here. And then we specify the max iteration. So here you can see I specify that we're gonna start with 20 iterations for testing. But in terms of uh, what we're gonna put for the prompts, this is the most important part because a lot of people, they just think, oh, complete this or run the spec implements. But keep in mind that after this iteration is run, it's gonna run multiple iterations, right? So we wanna make sure that this prompt is consistent in each iteration so that it's not like it's only used for one iteration, we're gonna use it for multiple iteration. So here you can see that this is the prompt that I prepare. So first I specify where we're gonna complete this. In this case, it's gonna be in this branch right here for this particular feature. And then I specify we're first gonna read through the entire task list to see if there's any tasks that are not completed. If they're not completed, well then complete them first and mark them as checked. Then for the phase two, we're just gonna rotate into different personas, try to review the entire code base and try to perfect it. And to in order to perfect it, we have to introduce multiple personas to review it. Because in a real life situation, we have different people on your teams try to review the code, right? People who are your coworkers, maybe they're also a developer, they're trying to review your code. Maybe they are a solution architect here, try to make sure that the file structure, the dependencies, also if there's refactors needed. And then there could also be like front-end designers, try to use maybe like the front-end design skill from Claw Code, which you can learn more about the skill, particularly in this video right here, okay? And you can use that to basically perfect UI user experience for this application, like improving the components, the accessibility, the responsiveness, right? And also maybe like QA, also think of like, how can people to increase the test coverage, aiming for like 90% above, and also writing the missing unit tests for the edge case that we can find, okay? There's also project managers, the business analysts, try to switch over to different personas here, try to improve our applications in each iteration, okay? So here you can see that for each iteration here, identify the current persona and try to perform that persona's review and also make one improvements or fix and also commit with messages based on that persona and a description. And also if there's any issue found by any personas for two full cycles and then I'll put it for completion. Because if this issue continuously happened, then we definitely want to stop it and basically have human get involved into this so that we're not cycle through in a dead end. Okay, so there must be a condition when this thing has to break. And I'm just gonna come back to the clock code session, paste the prompts, and we're just gonna have Ralph Wiggum here to basically loop through each iteration. 
So in this case, I'm just gonna run this and let's see what's gonna happen. All right, so right now you can see it's still iterating through, let's take a look, it's currently at the fifth iteration. So it's gonna choose the business analyst. It's using the module here to basically pick the uh, person or the persona is gonna take over here to review. So it's gonna review one by one, one by one until we finally get to you know everyone here to review it, right? So here you can see this is the previous one, which you can see this, the previous role, I think for before QA is project manager. And this is the project manager notes. So this is the project manager and this is what it has complete. So you can see it gives some feedback and then it starts to do the fix, right? So right here you can see, and it starts to do the business analyst here. So here is what the findings from the business analyst for the issues, and then it's trying to make the updates. Okay, and then it's gonna cycle through and try to have different persona here to review it. And right now it's gonna move on to the co-reviewer iteration. Okay, so in this case, let's wait for a bit until it fully completes. And then here you can see the Ralph loop has completed with two full cycles and cycle three, cycle four, the feature all pass with six personas review without any issues. All right, so in this case, it should be good now. If I were to run npm run dev and try to run the application again, all right, so now you can see I've navigated back to the receipts page. And right here, you can see the features added for import from cloud. So here, I'm just gonna import receipts from cloud storage like Google Drive, Dropbox, S3 share links, and import those receipts into our table. So right here, I'm just going to navigate to Google Drive, and I'm just gonna copy that link and paste it right here. So I'm gonna click on Fetch. Here you can see it auto detect Google Drive, and here you can see we have found three files inside of this Google Drive folder. So I'm just gonna click on import three files. It's gonna import all three files into using our OCR system here to extract those informations and I'll put them onto our uh, tables right here. You can see we have our vendor, we have our uh, payment method, right? We also have our amount, we have our upload date status. We can also click on the preview to preview the actual receipt. You can see that this is the receipt right here, which we also have our link from the Google Drive folder. And simply we can open this and be able to use it. So pretty much that's how we can be able to use Ralph Wickham here to continuously iterating through our cloud code session and basically iterating and until we get a perfect solutions at the end. Okay, so pretty much that's how it works. And if you do find out in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.